This episode is brought to you by Tim Hortons Canada. Get it while it's cold in October. I wish. That would be great. That would be great. To have a Timmy Ho sponsorship. Actually, well, I'll hold that thought for another video. I got so many, like, topical videos and things that I want to release through the month of October. Oh, yeah, sorry. Hey, how's it going? Been a long time since I've seen you. It's been about a month. Uh, i just been out here reevaluating, taking care of my physical health, more or less. And actually, currently, I'm at... Uh, these are soccer fields, but there's a two kilometer loop here that I walk every day. Uh, well, that's recent. That's a recent development because I was actually swimming at a place called the Canada Games Complex and I was in the deep end. I was doing an hour straight of different strokes, lengths, all these things. And then I would pop out, get into the spa, the hot tub. And then I would do a quick cool down. So I would get all of it. I'd get the workout. Uh, it was great. It was my Zen zone. I am a very much like a fish baby water child in a sense, even though I'm a Gemini. And I think that's an air sign. Uh, we're getting into astrology here. I don't know why, but, uh, um, yeah, I was swimming and it was so good. So good. Better than this coffee because this coffee is it's a schmedium. It's it's uh like schmedium in terms of whoever made it, it's you know, it's not the greatest, but it's alright. Um So I was swimming, you know, cleaning up the diet. The diet's super boring and repetitive. This is way off topic for this video, um, but the caffeine has kicked in at this point. Um anyways, the uh the tyrannical government uh implemented a a, a mandatory vegetable mandate for you to go to places now so you know show me your papers for you to do anything decent for yourself like to look after your health so i can't go anymore uh so now i've converted to the walking trend which is fine i've always dug this but i've been doing 6k a day takes me about an hour pretty quick like i got a nice little intermediate uh What's that? Power walking, like a sprint thing, right? Um, so yeah, I've been doing that. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. The title of this video is a little morbid, um, but it's true. And, you know, I'm fascinated by this. I feel as if it's a recent new phenomena that is happening sort of in my generation with like five years this way five years that way so let's call it like 27 to 37 like young to almost middle adulthood maybe like you're entering adulthood then you're realizing it, what adulthood is in this current time and uh i don't want to speak on the, even the generations after like that are behind us because i think they're going to be even more psychologically fucked but uh Basically, an occurrence happened last week that just finally, like, sparked this in me to move to speak about this, like, overwhelming amount of young adults' sudden, unexpected passings. And, you know, when those happen, usually that means we're talking overdose accidental overdose lost a battle to addiction and or suicide things of this nature like just people now some are sometimes kind of randomly organic and they're tra they're tragic but i feel like we're in a space now where there's a lot of people in this age range of like let's say 27 to 37 maybe that are just it seems like to me I want to say since like 2018, um, people are just passing away around me. Like I'm saying people I used to know personally that if I saw like in the grocery store today, we would stop and catch up about like old times or have like 
and talk about their current status um, and just acquaintances too, like just people I've been acquainted with. And it seems like from 2018 to now, so the last three or four years, it seems like every other week on socials, I'm seeing somebody that I once knew who is now dead due to like a very usually something to do with mental health, drugs, alcohol, depression, uh, dependency, overdose type thing. So, you know, mental health type stuff. And so this last week, a girl or a woman now, but a girl at the time that I, when I was, I don't know, 19, 20, like we used to have, we used to kind of, you know, we were in a, like a little mini relationship for a while. And, uh, she passed away unexpectedly. Suddenly she lost a, a battle with addiction, but she was like a very like bright light type person. Like definitely like, you know, seemingly very outward, like outgoing type person, like really, you know, hairstylist thing like that. And, uh, like, so it's very social and, and yeah, she just like lost her battle with her addiction. And then before that, the week before that, another girl that I knew back in around that time, she, same thing, gone. And it just seems like it's been that way for the last few years. And I kind of just, I basically wanted to make this video to, to be like, to reach out to the public in this space to ask you guys, like, is this a local phenomena that's happening in life? Like for me, or is this something that you guys are finding as well in your lives who are in a, that relevant age group? Like these kind of young adults just seemingly like day after like or week after week there's just one more gone one more gone to you know not to like any disease that's you know not to any you know cancer or things like of this nature or just tragedies but to like this specific thing like the, the drugs the alcohol the depression the anxiety the mental health issues things like that um and so I wanted to ask that question, like, is that a thing that you guys are experiencing in your life? Because I'm overwhelmingly experiencing it, which is wild. And the reason why I want to make this video is because I wanted to like psychoanalyze or speculate in comparison to previous generation. Like in my parents' generation, I don't think that this was as prevalent. I don't think this was a thing that occurred like on a weekly basis, like their friends and acquaintances just passing away due to this stuff. And, you know, there's a few reasons why that might be in the sense of like, well, now we're so connected socially through social media. So when it does happen, we hear about it. Whereas back in the day, it would have to travel distance. You'd have to phone people, play telephone. And you might even not hear about a bunch of like somebody that moved away you wouldn't ever hear of their passing until years later, probably. Right. So there's definitely the whole, the fact that we're like so connected now that we hear about everybody who's passing away pretty much in these circumstances. So there's that. But I also think that the other reason why this is happening and it's so weird because I know that like, my parents' generation, the generation before that, life's always been very challenging and difficult and people have always turned to substances and things of this nature. But um, I don't know if it was like as prevalent as back then, but we like back then life, they had their struggles and it's like we live in a time of like uber convenience and it seems like everything's a bit easier, like it's a lot easier in a sense. But what they didn't have back then was this psychological mind fuck. And here's the irony is I'm speaking to you about this through a camera, through the internet. So the irony is not lost on me um, about what I'm about to say, but there is this psychological thing to do now with the internet where we are living mostly artificial lives or at least um, these comparative lives on socials and 
it's like people are manufacturing and fabricating the highlights of their lives. And, and I think that facade or something like some people do have a really sick life. Right. And of course you're just sitting back being like, how did they, you know, like you're kind of envious or whatever. And you're like, you like think to yourself, like, I'm not amounting. I'm not, I'm not matching up, but you also don't know like what their circumstances, what kind of help they've had, if they've had family help and things like that. And, but anyways, what I'm saying is ultimately is like, there is this artificial world and psychological manipulation that's happening on happening on mass to us that we pay attention to too much all day, every day. And we all know this, but I just think that back in our parents day and before that, it like, we just, that wasn't ever a thing. Sorry, I'm watching these kids play soccer because I'm like looking away from the camera, but it helps to think. Um, it just wasn't this, it wasn't a thing. Like you had more tangible, interactive, personal community. You had to go physically to like hang out with people and stuff. And now we just compare through a screen and talk through screens. And obviously with what's going on in the world, you know, we've been shut away and that's a whole, there's so many whole other videos that I can speak on. But what I'm saying is, is the psychological aspect of this artificial online life. And then how everything now is so, so modernized and like we expect to have the nice life like immediately or at least on socials, like so many people can present the nice things immediately because we live in a, like a more modern world. Whereas I think back in our parents' day too, it's like they used to get the beater car until they were able to spend 10, 10 years like getting into position to get even maybe a newer car, like a brand new car, or they got the starter home and they, that was like their home for like 20 years until they, and they did little maintenance and workups on it and made it a a little bit better. But then eventually if they were able to, you know, be savvy with their finances and things and, you know, save and move up and eventually maybe they could sell it, make a profit and then get like the better house. But our generation, it's because of we live in this uh, instant gratification, super modern world. And we see all these images of these like perfection of lives. We like think, oh, we should just have all the greatness immediately, like all the nice stuff. And and uh, so that plays a, 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 a weird psychological thing. But then in this current time uh if you go back to like the industrial boom when our parents were coming up the the cost of living and cost of things relative to 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 uh to wage in that time frame like if you look at inflation and housing and cost of living and the market of everything from that back in that time food everything comparatively the inflation that has occurred relative to the wage increases it's astronomically uh like there's the disparity is insane between the two and so we're living in this weird wild time of these things that are occurring yes our lives are more um convenient and things are technically easier in a sense but you know these the 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 boomer age and older people, they have all the wealth and they're holding on to that wealth and then they're driving up the markets by buying up all of the real estate and property and they're just driving everything up and like our wages can't, we can't contend, we can't even get in for the most part. Like, you know, million dollar houses are just standard at this point, like, you know, so it's just, a, it's just crazy. So I think all of that is compiling on people in that age range of like 27, 37 or like, and you went to school, you got in a shit ton of debt and now your paper doesn't really get you in anywhere or like the, the job you go to for, go to get is like, well, you need experience. You're like, but I don't, how do I, <laughs> how am I supposed to gain experience if you're not going to offer me like an entry level possibility to get to gain that experience relative to my 
my paper that's worth a hundred grand at this point. Like, so yeah, there's all like, there's that aspect of it. And I just think there's like this like hopelessness or something when it comes to that, perhaps like, I feel like it's a very trying thing mentally between the social, psychological, artificial life. And then the, uh, the actual financial aspect of looking at life through what could be possible for you. And then you look and you're like, this is this, none of this, like, there's no, there's no, there's no point. Like, I don't know how I even, how do I get ahead? So I think people get overwhelmed with that. And then what I think is also happening is I think we're, we're coming into a time where we've seen so much, uh, consumerist, well, production, starting with production and corporations and, and, uh, the selling of all these material consumer goods. I think that was a boom era of a thing. And now like the, our generation and the generation behind us are sort of seeing that like the consumerist capitalist way and just the, the hoarding of, of, of material things and having all of that and huge houses with bedrooms you don't use and things like that. I think we're seeing that like that doesn't equate to like true happiness or success. And I think a lot of people are coming to the idea that like a more minimalist or essentialist, simpler, you know, only have the one vehicle or a smaller downsize your house, but make it work more effectively for you. Be more considerate about, you know, all of the things that you purchase and buy. And I just think we're moving into a time where it's like, we, we want it to be more just, just less in that sense. And I feel like so many people see that, like a lot of, their career or job or whatever it is that they're working is like soul sucking and meaningless. It doesn't really bring them much fulfillment and it also doesn't even pay that well. And so, you know, now that's another thing. Like, so you're depressed with that. Like you, you're just, you're faced with this, with this unfulfilling job or career or whatever, for the most part, it doesn't pay that well and you don't see how you're going to make it in the materialist sense of, of, of old. And so now you're looking to move into the new, but, and you want to like break free from all of the, the shackles and chains of, of the, uh, of the system of, of all the taxation and everything to do with all of the bills, that you, you know, all your insurances, all your taxes, all your, anything that you have to register that you own that you're, it's going to cost you more and more money. Like you want to try to break free as much as, as much as you can, but you realize that the system is so set up for you to like not get out of because most, I I know a ton of people who just want a tiny home off grid and like want to keep it simple and just live like real, real light. I want to live real light. Like I don't even want like crazy amounts of shit. I just want to be like, Cause I already live an essentialist life. Like everything I own and the way that my space is mapped out at home, everything I own serves me as a tool. And if it doesn't serve me as a tool, I sell it or throw it out. Once I stop using something and it sits there for a month, two months and I go, I haven't used that. It's gone. And I don't have excess bowls and dishes and cutlery. Like you go to some people's houses and it's like two people and they have a drawer full of like 50 knives, 50 forks, 50 spoons. Like why? If you're two people or three people, let's say you got your two people and a kid, like can't you all just have like three spoons each and three knives each and three forks? Like, you know what I mean? Because the less shit you have, the easier it is to maintain your life, right? Like, it, the easier it is to just be like cleaning on the fly and putting things away as you do it to do cleaning maintenance as you go and to only have really what you need. 
And I feel like that's the way that our generation, the other generation behind us are going to start to go. It's going to be more, you know, technologically convenient efficiencies mixed with like minimal essential style living where it's just easier to manage and you don't have all this stuff and clutter and things and you don't have to buy all this shit to like seem like you have more than the next person I, I feel like but uh, so you want to break free from this bullshit but you know it's still set up for you to to have a hard time doing that they don't want you to not exist in the in the societal matrix that they've created for you. Like, that's what it is. When we say matrix, we don't mean like you're plugging into the simulation and it's like ones and zero database and you're in some sim. It just means that there's a structure that has been a societal um, structure that has been set forth for you from hundreds. Of, they've been working on it for hundreds of years, right? Through law and institutions. Right, so you're institutionalized from birth. These are whole other videos though, I'm going too far. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to wrap on that. Maybe I'll wrap this up here in the sense, but I, that's what I just feel about our current generation. Like, and I don't even know what's gonna happen to the one behind us because they are so, they are so plugged in, man, like to the artificial screen world. And, and now they're growing up in this time where it's like, they got their vegetable muzzle on. They got to take their two vegetables to the arm. Uh, I don't know if they have to show something to go to class, like a piece of ID now. Like, And then in class, they're all just like, everyone's, they're all like so far apart. They can barely see each other. They don't see each other's mouths move or smiles and things like that. Just like natural human like you need facial expression for context. How much, how much communication is in, in, in your expression in body language, like most of it. And so like these kids are growing up in, in such a time of like, don't touch each other. Don't get close to each other. No human contact. Don't like, you can't see each other smile or laugh. Like it's fucking so sad, man. But it's all, that's the point, right? If you're awake to this shit, you understand that this is the point. I don't know. It's just, it's just like signs of the times. It's just like sad, man. It's just, I, and, and they're so screened. So of course, when you're uh, a kid, your brain is so, uh, you're able to, 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 to wire it subconsciously through programming so goddamn hard. And they're just on the screen all the time, man. Like, and everything that feeds through that is going to manipulate their, their mind and condition them to think this way and I just feel like they're going to get even more even worse, even more depressed even more detached, even more it's just going to get worse I, I feel like unless something changes like major but uh, yeah so I don't know about their generation what's going to happen with that but I feel like in ours this seems like a new Compared to this other demic that's going on, this epidemic that I see pretty much every week, somebody within a 10 year age spend in their late 20s to late 30s, they're just, they're dropping dead. Like, and it's not, and it's not by just random tragedies. It's by mental health, you know, depression, anxiety, hopelessness, suicide, drugs, alcohol, dependency overdose and the other thing i will say and i meant to touch on this way back is obviously fentanyl is playing a huge huge role in a lot of it it seems like it's getting better like it's not as bad as it was like in 2018 2019 fentanyl was like sketch bag in terms of like you have i feel i felt like if you go out at night and do drugs you have like a one in six chance of like getting fenty it felt like at the time so you know the people fuck fentanyl dealers and shit and like who or who do that that's ridiculous but i will say that play was playing a massive part and it still does play a massive part but i don't know man it just seems and it doesn't seem like it's local to me but that's why i'm making this video is because i want to know is like 
are you, and if you're in a similar age range to that, are you experiencing this within your public, like your, your social radius or circumference, better word, radius is the half. <laughs> yeah. In your social circumference of life, like, are you seeing people just constantly dropping? Like, cause I am. And it's just getting to the point where I'm like, really? Like another one, you know, 30 years old, gone. So ultimately that's why I wanted to make this video. I just felt moved to like speak about this cause it just seems like it's actually the worst demic currently that's happening. And you know, I, 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 I would say that maybe a portion of these are definitely due to you know, the, uh, essentially human injustices that have been imposed upon us during this time that put people in terrible head spaces. And then they end up just being like, fuck it. I'm out. So, you know, that's, yeah. I just want to know if this is a, a trending theme in, in your experience lately, or if this is just local to me in my life, I don't know for sure. But from what I can tell from what I've been able to observe about people that I know in distance around me, it's not, it's a something that's happening like a lot in the world. And, uh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just sad. And the saddest part before I wrap and the hardest part for me is I'm in that age range and you know, I can relate to them, right? I can relate to these people. I know their current mental struggle and battle with this life that we're in, uh, in, in, in the social climate of this world, you know, financially and, and everything like that in terms of achievement and, and things like, and just the old, you know, industrial boom way of thinking, like the, just that, that consumerist life of just acquiring and things, 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 and lots of material. Bye, bye, bye. You know, like I can relate to all that and, and the frustrations that come with that. And I can relate to the uh, disenchantment and the lack of fulfillment in what it is that you have to get up and go do every day. Um, cause most people don't get to live their dream. Most people don't get to live, uh, their ideal career, uh, you know, it's just the fact, like most people don't. Not that you can't make it happen, but just most people don't is what I'm saying. So, you know, I understand all these, 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 these weights that are on you. And, uh, and then alternatively, like to that, I also understand the battle with substances. We all know, I've admitted to you guys, like I've gone through my shit with all that, mainly in a, in a, uh, in a, in a party sense per se, but like I said, I want to be uploading a bunch of different topical videos. I want to talk about all that stuff. And, you know, late as of late, the last couple of years, I have struggled with alcohol a lot. Um, like low key a bit, a bit, like I've always kept it pretty well in check in terms of how I present myself. But, you know, in, in the behind the scenes, like alcohol has been playing a massive, a massive, uh, a massive, uh, I don't know, opposition to me in my life. It's, it's definitely a thing that, that is, uh, I, you know, I have a hold on it. I've always been able to, to manage it. And I know like when it, like I can always show up for myself when I need to. And when things seem like they get too far, I'm always able to like stand, make a choice and stand in that choice and, and be good about things. But you know, I, I just can relate to why you would use something like that to, <sighs> there's so many reasons that you, you use things like that. Or at least for me, there's definitely like, it's more than just one main reason, right? Not, it's not just to numb 
my life or whatever the case, right? There's various reasons. But like I said, another video, um, I'm gonna go for my walk here because I'm, uh, I'm on my lame, boring, repetitive diet life, uh, very restrictive. <laughs> and uh, doing my exercise and things like that. So yeah, I just wanted to, wanted to talk about that. I felt after that person's passing, I just, it just woke something up inside of me to talk about. And, uh, and yeah, I want to upload like all October, but I, like I said, it's like, Maybe we'll have some, uh, like a healthy couple food. Maybe I'll have like some salad videos or something. I don't know, like just some healthier meals and then we can talk about shit or I have, I just have a lot of topics and things I want to speak about. Lots of stuff weighing, you know, deep in my, my heart, my soul, my, and, and weighing on my conscience and, um, yeah, I, if anybody can, benefit or gain or find any intrigue through it or then that's cool <laughs> so uh wrap that one here go get my steps in is my face any thinner i think it is to to be honest uh the uh, uh the weight is definitely like coming off pretty decently okay fast not like super fast but definitely I've, i can notice quite a bit of difference in certain areas of my body um so yeah gonna get my steps in i hope y'all are all right i'm schmedium like i'm i'm fine but like life is still I don't know. It's just the world we live in right now is just insane. And we'll talk about that too. So I don't know. I'm schmedium. I'm like doing okay, but I'm ultimately schmedium. Okay. If you can even understand what that means. Till the next one, um, just live well and stay true.